Hi I am Shah and this is part 1 of SQL Server. In this session we understand how to connect to SQL Server using SQL Server Management Studio. We will learn SQL Server Management Studio and the different authentication methods that can be used to connect to SQL Server. Now you need to have SQL Server Management Studio already installed on your machine. If not there are several articles on the web which can help you how to do that. So once you have SQL Server Management Studio installed on your machine to open that go to the start menu, select all programs. And depending on the version of the SQL Server that you have installed you should see a respective folder here for example if you have installed SQL Server 2008. You should see a folder for that here Microsoft SQL Server 2008 on my machine. I have Microsoft SQL Server 2019 so I see a folder for that. Expand that and within that folder you should see SQL Server Management Studio. Now select that. Once you select that's the Management Studio you should see a connect to server window coming up. And this is the place where we specify the information that is required for SQL Server Management Studio to connect to a SQL Server database. Now SQL Server Management Studio and the SQL Server database are two different things. A database server typically contains all the tables and the data you know. Any SQL Server Management object that you create for example it could be trigger view tables data related to those tables etc. All of that will be stored centrally on that database server and to connect to that database server the client tool that we generally use is SQL Server Management Studio so keep in mind SQL Server Management Studio is just a client tool to connect to the database server. And it is not the server by itself so in a typical development environment the database server might be installed on one centralized machine and usually developers can connect to that using a SQL Server Management Studio that's installed on their respective machine. In this example you can see that we have four developers and from each of the developer machine we can use SQL Server Management Studio specify. For example from first developer machine if I have to connect to the SQL Server database I need to tell the server name and user ID password and how do you want to connect from this machine to this server. Do you want to use Windows authentication or SQL Server authentication? The point to keep in mind SQL Server Management Studio is just the client tool and not the server by itself. And now we will see how to configure SQL Server Management Studio to connect to a database server. So if we go back. Okay so this is the window that we typically see when we open up SQL Server Management Studio for the first time. Now the first choice that we have to make is to specify the server type. Usually it's the database engine. But you want to connect to analysis services or reporting services or integration services which are also respectively called SSAS, SSRS, and SSIS. SSIS means SQL Server Integration Services. SSRS and SQL Server Reporting Services. And SAS SQL Analysis Services. We don't want to connect to any of them, we just want to connect to the database server, so that's why we use the database engine here. In the later module when we talk about SQL Server Integration Services and Reporting Services we will see how to connect to those databases using the respective options. For now it's Database Engine and you also need to specify the server name. Now if you have an environment like this you know where you have a database server on a centralized machine then you need to specify the name and IP address off that server. But here on my machine you know the database server and the SQL Server Management Studio both are installed on my machine. The database server is also present on my local machine. So if that's the case then I can specify the IP address of my computer itself you know the local IP address which is 127.0.0.1 it's also called as loopback IP address here from a networking background. So to refer the local machine I can use the loopback IP address which is 127.0.0.1 or I can also just use dot to specify so that I that I want to connect to the local server or I can specify local keyword here so any of these will tell the SQL Server Management Studio we want to find an installation of SQL Server database on the local machine and not over the network. So you can either use local dot or an IP address 127.0.0.1. You can use any of these. Once we have the server name specified then the important decision that we have to make is how do we want to connect to the database server do we want to use Windows authentication or SQL server authentication.
Now the options available here for you to connect depends on how you have configured the SQL Server during installation when we were installing. SQL Server basically provides us with two options for authenticating against that installation of SQL Server. There's two options are mixed mode authentication or SQL Server authentication. If you choose mixed mode authentication then it means both of these options will be available for you to connect to the SQL Server if you have just chosen SQL Server authentication then you cannot use Windows authentication so the options available here for you to connect to the SQL Server basically depend open how you have installed the SQL Server. If you choose Windows authentication then you don't have to provide any of the username or password. That's because Windows Authentication basically uses the Windows login that you have used to log into this computer so you have already authenticated yourself to log into this computer so basically that Windows username and password will be used to validate you against this database. On the other hand you can also use SQL Server Authentication. So when you use SQL Server Authentication or installing SQL Server again you would have specified what is the username and password that you want to use to connect to this installation installation of SQL Server so you specify that username and password typically we specify that as a system administrator and the password for that. So we have to provide that username and password so let's provide that username and password and then I can click connect. So now when I click connect it should connect to an installation of SQL Server that's locally installed on that machine. And once that's done look at this. It has connected to the local SQL Server on this machine and then I can basically see all the databases and the security related stuff. Now this on the left hand side is called the Object Explorer window where you can see the database objects. You can explore through those database objects that's why it's basically called the Object Explorer. Now if you have to write a query then you need a space to do that and the first thing you have to do is click on this new query button on the top left hand corner that should bring you up to query editor window where basically we can type and execute queries ok but again to type and execute queries we needed a database. What's a database? A database is a collection of tables and all your database objects. Ok we'll see in the next session how to create a database and we will start writing queries. Ok now so this is your object explorer and this is your query editor window. And if I just hover my mouse over there it shows me I'm connected to the local machine and then there. You see something called master that's nothing but the database context that we are currently in so here you can switch the database against which you want to write a query now you might be wondering how did I get all these databases here for example system databases for expand that I have master model msdb so what are these as the name suggests these are system databases and how did they get in here when I installed SQL Server? They automatically got installed and these are required for the functionality of the SQL Server OK and we can also create user defined databases you know by just right clicking on that and selecting new database which we'll be doing in the next section OK basically this session is all about how to connect to SQL Server and the point that we have to keep in mind is that SQL Server Management Studio is not a server by itself there's many people get confused by that it is just a client tool to connect to the SQL Server on. That's it all for today thank you for listening have a great day.